Now, Channel 4 News has the first television footage from the areas where pro-Assad militia are claimed to have come from to carry out the notorious Hula massacre in Syria. As the diplomatic pressure on Syria over that incident continues, this time in St. Petersburg with talks between the EU and Russia, so did the fighting inside Syria. Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, is the only reporter to have been to the Alawite villages near Hula. It's claimed by survivors of the massacre that they harboured their heavy guns and men who were responsible for the deaths of over 100 people, mostly women and children. This is what he found. Welcome to Homs, the international symbol of civil war, where many districts are surprisingly peaceful. Traffic police. <laughs> buses. Life running as normal. And welcome to the other homes, the districts controlled by the rebels, pounded daily by the Syrian army. Convoys rolling towards the city to maintain President Assad's assault on what he calls the terrorists. There is no safe way in here. This UN Red Crescent patrol has already been turned back once by the fighting. They're trying to recover bodies. We're offered a lift in the back of the ambulance. Past the rubble and pulverized buildings into the killing zone, a world away from normal life we've left just half a mile to the south. We reach rebel lines where people are understandably pumped up. They accuse the Syrian army of firing chemical weapons into this area. We find no evidence to support that. Mortars, rockets. This is what Assad's army is using against us. No bodies for the UN and Red Crescent to recover either. This patrol is now isolated and vulnerable. They get fired on frequently. But the rebels bear some responsibility for the civilian carnage in this war, as well as the Syrian army. The people here complain of the constant bombardment, but the fact is the Syrian army are fighting their war in built-up areas. And if the rebels decide to do that, then people are going to get hurt and they just know that full well. Back across no man's land to government lines. And at the UN hotel, they gather around to see what we've filmed, amazed to see scenes of streets they've not been able to visit for months, even though they're 10 minutes walk away from here. We leave Homs heading out to the west of Hula, over a week on from the terrible massacre there. This is Kabul, where so many eyewitnesses and survivors in Hula insisted the killers had come from. No Sunnis live here, only Alawites, yet we are welcomed. In Alawite Kabul, they blame the massacre in Hula on Sunni families who lived there. Historically and for hundreds of years, we have an excellent relations and we love each other and we'll be back to normal. Killing each other because of feuding. But there's no evidence of that, but no evidence either of the feared Shabiha supposed to have come from here. Below, as we talk to people in the village, the shelling opens up on Hula again. The only forces in this area who appear to have heavy weapons, of course, the Syrian army. We're on our way south again, crossing the lines over no man's land, passing farmers incredibly going about their normal business. We're going into the mainly rebel-held town of al -Qusayr. Evidence in the town of heavy bombardment, which people here say continues almost daily. And we meet here a colonel who's defected to the rebels from the Syrian army and tells us when and where he's personally witnessed the Shabiha militias blamed for the massacre in Al Hula, working alongside the Syrian army. They work side by side with the army. That's the proof. That means they have the green light from the army. We know who they are. Four days ago, rebels claim they destroyed a Syrian army tank here and arrested soldiers loyal to President Assad. And so after two intensive days of crossing the lines here between the government-held areas and the rebel zones around Homs, Hula, al qusayr and in all that time not a shred of evidence to support the government's line that it had nothing to do with the massacre that happened in Hula.
Plenty of evidence, though, that the government bombardment of civilian areas continues, if not intensifies. And both sides in this war bear responsibility for that. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, al -Qasir. While the Free Syrian Army are reported tonight to have rejected the Kofi Annan peace plan, and despite that, there's little sign of progress on the diplomatic front. The UN Secretary General is still calling for the international community to unite behind that plan that the rebels are now rejecting. The Russian President Vladimir Putin remains a sticking point, it seems. He met the European Council Chief Herman Van Rompuy today, who said that although both sides support the Annan plan, they have divergent assessments of the situation.